You know, I know a lot of film people complain about too many sequels and not enough original ideas, but given the fact that this Godzilla series has been nothing but reboots, thank God for a sequel. You remember my last review when I said that Mothra was part of the same universe as that movie? Well, this movie actually takes advantage of that idea. The plot of this movie is that Mothra and her twin fairies are disturbed by the idea that the original Godzilla bones were used as part of Kiryu, saying that the reason Godzilla keeps coming ashore is because it's attracted to the bones. Which, when you think about it, is stupid, but it wasn't until Kiryu's completion in the last movie that Godzilla actually came to Japan. They also say that Godzilla would probably leave them alone if they got rid of Kiryu, and if anything bad should ever happen, Mothra would be their protector. This is hard for the Japanese government to take seriously since Mothra attacked Japan in 1961. You know, it's really a shame that Mothra vs. Godzilla is not in this continuity because that would make them trust Mothra a little more. But whatever the case, Godzilla does return and goes after Kiyu to get his revenge for getting defeated in the last movie and leaving a giant scar on his chest. But then Mothra flies in to battle Godzilla, but once Godzilla starts to get the upper hand, not only is she aided by Kiyu, but also her offspring come from Infant Island to help her. Now I gotta say, in terms of this movie, I'm really conflicted on it. Um, while the last movie seemed like more of a setup, I believe it or not, I actually like that movie better because it had Akane in it, who was a very interesting character and a character that I actually liked. She's only in a cameo here because the Q squadron from the last movie are all moving on to do other things, and in terms of controlling Kiryu, she's being replaced by this just douchebag guy. Who the only reason he's there is because his dad works for the Japanese government. I really can't give a really good reason why I hate this guy. The only reason I can give is that he reminds me of someone who bullied me back in elementary school, so that's probably why. But in that, I just don't like this guy. So, there's not really much to say about this one. There is one cool element of this movie, though. Toho veteran Hiroshi Koizumi, who was in the original Mothra and a few of Showa Godzilla movies, is in this movie reprising the same role he played in Mothra, so that's kind of cool and a neat way to connect the two movies character-wise. Another neat Toho cameo is of this snapping turtle monster named Kamibus, who was in the 1970s Shiro Honda film Space Amoeba. By cameo, I mean like it's found on the beach dead with a bite mark in its neck that they assume came from Godzilla. Not really any importance there, but it's cool to see a long-lost monster again in another Godzilla movie, even though it never encountered Godzilla and was found dead. Other than that, it's got some good action, good music, and overall, it's good, but not great. There's nothing really special about it. And that's probably it. That's my review for Tokyo SOS, and I will see you guys tomorrow with the last review of Godzilla month, so I will see you tomorrow. Bye!